Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today is another video about everyone is who pushed out. Um, the reason being is I've had a couple of questions this week and they've been interesting questions and also a comment on one of my videos about random behaviour. Behaviour from people that you don't understand, you don't, you haven't given them the role to play, you know you didn't, you know that you didn't feel that they were behaving this way, you weren't expecting it and it happened anyway. How do you sort of work that out with everyone is you pushed out, especially if it's a new person that's come into your life and then they've behaved in that way, you're like, what the hell, you know, what's going on there? Um, uh, this is why I want to say that for me, it's everything is you pushed out, everything. And so if you don't just say everyone is you pushed out and then you forget about everything else then, it's everything is you pushed out. I believe in my reality, that's what it is. Now, let's just say that maybe there's a, an argument for what you believe is going on in your reality is going on in your reality. Um, I'm just going to give you an example here. I have told this story before, but it was such an old video and I, I took it down quite a long time ago because I don't believe the same thing anymore. Um, well, I don't look at everyone as you pushed out in the same way. So I have had some best friends for uh, 18 years. It's a really great friendship. And it started when our kids were at um, nursery playgroup and we've been friends ever since, three of us. And after a few years, my friend Mel brought her cousin into the group who had moved into the area, which was fine. We all got on really well. She was a great part of the group. We just all gelled and it was all cool. No issues at all. Anyway, the friendship was going along and I, I believe that I have maybe had this underlying feeling or program running within me that the friendship could end because I'd had uh, a couple of good friendships end in the past. Nothing like, we haven't fallen out or anything, but they had just come to a natural conclusion and, and gone and, you know, people that I had history with. So, you know, it's a shame when those friendships end, but they were like mutual things, you know, it wasn't a problem, but I really didn't want this friendship to end. So I think I had something going along in there. Um, don't can't quite pinpoint it, but I think that I did. And then over time, I started to feel that maybe something wasn't quite right with the friendship. I kept noticing little things and thinking that's weird. Somebody would say something and I think, why have they said that? But you see, I don't know whether I made that up from nowhere or whether it was coming from what was going on in the background. Anyway, I had this overwhelming feeling that the friendship was going to um, implode, <laughs> explode, implode. I don't know what, what word is right there. I had this feeling and then it wasn't long after that it did. And what happened is the girl, um, my friend's cousin, Mel's cousin, had basically just come out with all this stuff and was telling one person one thing, another person another, another person. So there was going on uh, and I kind of got, got let off lightly. I, I feel like it was um, a sort of a power play. I don't know. I can't really, I can't really um, explain it. But what I do know is that I was very fond of her and I was probably really close to her actually um, at one point and she would have Harry to stay and I'd go to her house, we'd have coffee sometimes separately from the other two, but not secretly or anything like that. It just so happened that she might um, invite the boys to play and then I'd go there for coffee. And I was really, really fond of her, really was. And so when it all happened, I couldn't believe it. And I couldn't believe that it had come from her. Not that I would have expected either of the other two to have done it either, but I just couldn't believe it. So everyone as you pushed out was very confusing to me then. And I thought, I didn't give her that role to play. When I told the story, people said, but you gave her that role to play. And I thought, no, I didn't, I really didn't. The thing is, I did create the situation. I fully believe that I created that situation happening. It just so happened that she was given the role of the baddie, really, basically, by reality, you know. Um, so that so that was everything is me pushed out. Not everyone is me pushed out because I did not choose her to be the one that split that up. I did not give her that part to play. So here's where it gets a little bit more complex, isn't it? When you're looking at people behaving in a certain way and you really can't understand why they've behaved in that way, well, maybe it's more to do with the bigger picture and not to do with them, a role that you've given them to play when you know that you haven't. Now here, in my opinion, is the danger with this, is that you take the blame for everything. Somebody behaves badly towards you and you kind of accept it. You want them, say somebody, you know, cheats on you and your relationship is over and you want that back again because you think it must be something that I felt. Maybe you can pinpoint it and you know it's something you felt, but then what you start doing is accepting scraps from that person when they do start coming back because you think, 
it's your fault anyway, you've done this, so you end up, and then when you start accepting scraps from a person, you will just get more of that, you really will, because you're accepting it, and you're saying it's okay, so you're just gonna get more and more. So there is nothing wrong with, in your head, calling them out and saying no, and even calling them out in person if something like that happens, and just saying to yourself, this is not acceptable to me, I don't accept that kind of behavior, and I will not accept that, in the future. And this is just my opinion on the subject mind because I just think that you stop living your life then and you start looking for a reason for absolutely everything that happens in your life and you won't find a reason for everything. You won't because it's probably be so deep buried or maybe it's not even there. We just don't know and I think, let's point this out, like we don't know do we 100% what's going on here. I believe that that's what's going on. I believe that everything in my life now I can pinpoint to something that I felt or wanted definitely. Um, but then people will behave randomly in my life when I think, why have they done that? But I don't try to work it out because I know that I can't work it out. Things happen that we can't explain, that we can't put down to something we felt or, because you just, again, we just cannot explain this completely 100%. Anybody that says that they can, maybe they can for their reality, but maybe it's not the case for everybody's reality. Maybe there's an argument for what you believe in your reality is what is going on in your reality. For me, I do believe it, but I do believe it's slightly complex. I don't believe that it's as simple as everything somebody does in your reality is something that you've caused them to do. I can't because there are things that happen and people behave in a way that I think, what? And I, I really can't pinpoint that down to anything particular that I felt about them and I don't look for it. I do believe this and I do believe that if somebody is behaving in a certain way, maybe somebody behaves in a way, they have this baseline, you know, uh, way that they are and then we start to build up feelings of them and then they start to behave. Overall, they start to reflect back to us in that way but we can't be in control of every single little thing that that person does and it gets dangerous when we start to think that because we start to just accept all kinds of crappy behaviour. Then we feel bad, we feel bad about ourselves because because we're cross with ourselves because we think that we've done it and we're not living our best life then are we it's just not I just don't think it's particularly healthy unless you openly know and you just can pinpoint something yep I felt that and that's why that happened for sure that's why that happened that's a bit different but when you're not sure or you really it does seem like random behavior put it down to that just Go, you can accept random behaviour, you know, you, there are no rules here. You don't have to believe in everything as you pushed out to, uh, and then sort of think that nothing can happen randomly. I don't really think that things happen randomly, but what I do think is that we can't always find a reason for it. And if we try looking for it, I used to want answers to everything, but when you do that, you throw up more and more questions, you end up miserable because you're constantly looking for an explanation for something that's happened. And you're thinking, it must be me, I've done this, I've done this. And you just, you know, you do start accepting behavior that isn't acceptable. Some behavior just is not acceptable. For example, if you've been in conversation with somebody and you've asked them a question, you've been having a nice conversation and they never come, they don't come back to you. Or maybe they don't come back to you for a few weeks, then they do come back to you. That is not acceptable, in my opinion, because if you do accept that and then you engage in conversation with them again and the same thing happens, the same thing will keep happening, keep happening. It's quite good to draw your line there and say, no, I don't accept that. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna finish the conversation. The thing is with me and the advice I give, it's it sometimes is a little bit conflicting for me because I'm also a life coach. So um, I like to mix my advice that I give with general common sense and, and sort of life practice and making it work with believing in this as I do. And I like to live, as I always say, a normal life with a splash of magic. That's the way I look at it because I don't want to get too caught up in trying to control everything, even though I know that everything is me pushed out. I've got to a point in my life, I believe, where I uh, my feelings are sort of probably governed by this in the way that I know it's a thing, so I now feel differently about things and think differently, but that's happened over time. It's been a natural process, pretty much. I've picked tips up along the way from other people, but pretty much it's all been my 
my thing, you know, it's what works for me and that's how I prefer to live my life. So it is everything as you pushed out, not necessarily, it's not just everyone as you pushed out, everything. So let's include people in with everything, not just give them their separate little part of this. It's a whole big picture, I think. And if that works for you, um, really, I'm not saying that you should be resentful and stuff when people do things like that. No, definitely don't be that because that only hurts you. But I do say to set your standard so that you know what you will and won't accept. And just because you may have caused it, it doesn't mean that you then accept that, start accepting that kind of behaviour because you've caused it, because you'll just get more and more of it. And we don't want that. You want to put a stop to that. Know what's happened. That's brilliant. And decide that it isn't going to happen again because you can change the way that you feel about yourself and about life in order to make it reflect back to you differently next time. Don't worry about this time, it's been and gone. Um, it's, a, it's a really funny thing, isn't it? When somebody, when I've done that, somebody's just completely stopped speaking to me and then come back to me ages later and I've, and I've had conversation and I've got back into that because I've kind of known that I have caused that. Um, but at the same time, I've never then given too much of myself. I do know that if that happened again with anybody, then I would, that would be the end for me completely. I, I think I've grown over time to know that I do find that unacceptable. And I always have, but I've, I've let people get away with that in the past. So if that has happened to you, and then you really want to engage with that person again, because you want them back in your life, that's absolutely cool. It's whatever works for you, but just be mindful of the fact that, you know, you don't accept that. It's not going to happen again. So just don't give too much of yourself straight away. And that's not a game playing thing. It really isn't. It's just protecting yourself and just reminding yourself of your standards. Now, I have this standard now, so I'm not going to just give myself freely to this person that has um, stepped away from me for no good reason um, that I can think of. E even if you know that you created it, you do or you don't, it doesn't matter. You don't want it to happen again. So just um, sort of protect your magic. <laughs> I think that's the best way to describe it. I don't know what's the best way to describe it. Sometimes it's very difficult, isn't it, to describe this stuff. And I really feel now that I've gone right into waffle. <laughs> I'm probably not making much sense now because all these things fly into my mind and then I start talking about them. Um, so really, everyone as you pushed out is everything as you pushed out. If you can't find a reason for it and you can't work out why somebody has treated you in a certain way, don't worry about it. I think there's nothing I can do. It's happened. I don't understand why it's happened, but I don't want it to happen again. So I know sort of what I need to, how I need to get my thoughts going if I don't want this to happen again. So, you know, just draw a line under it. It's happened. It's done. It's dusted. You know, it, it's life. Sometimes random shit happens and we just don't know why. And, you know, I'm not here to tell you, oh, I think it's this. I have this theory because some stuff I just don't, I don't get. I don't understand. I really don't. I just work with it in the best way that I can. If something happens that I don't like, I I don't want it to happen again. I work with it that way. I don't stress about that it's happened. I can't because it's done. There's nothing I can do about it. I can't change it. So anyway, I could start then talking about revision, but you know, we'll do that in another video. I think I'm going to stop now. If you don't know anything about me, then I'm an author. I've written four books. They're all listed below. I have a members area on my website, which is five pounds a month with which you get one-to-one -one email coaching support from me. Um, also, I do Zoom coaching. I am really booked up, so I'm really not flexible with dates. That's the thing, because I, I don't move into my new office until the middle of June. So at the moment, I'm in with somebody else, and I, you know, so I can only do it when I'm at home. So I'm not terribly flexible, but do by all means drop me a line if you would like some coaching from me, and we'll see if we can come up with a date. And uh, what else? My son has a channel, Harrison Ellis. That's a Law of Attraction channel, and that is linked below too. So after all that, thanks for watching. And if you'd like to subscribe, that'd be awesome. If not, I just hope that you've got something useful from this video.